my gosh! Wow! <laughs> Thank you so much. This is so awesome to be performing at the best English comedy show ever to exist in Nantes. <laughs> oh my gosh. I told my mum that I was going to be performing at the best English comedy show ever to happen in Nantes. She was like, yeah, but John, it's also going to be the worst <laughs> that's ever happened in Nantes. Guys, uh, thank you so much for having me. Uh, my name is John. Uh, I come from New Zealand. Uh, <laughs> uh, New Zealand in the indigenous language would say Aotearoa, uh, which roughly translates to the land of the Lord of the Rings. Uh, <laughs> Kiwi, I am a Kiwi. Uh, I'm from Auckland. Auckland is my city, which is where all the Orcs live, okay? Nice, easy way to remember. I live in Europe, I live in Barcelona, right? People are always like, John, why did you move from New Zealand to Barcelona? What's going on? Do you have family in Europe? And I always have to explain to people, no, no, I moved to Barcelona because I have family in, in New Zealand. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I mean, look, don't get me wrong, I love my family, very great family, very weird family, very strange family, right? Uh, my dad, I said they were missionaries, uh, after they were missionaries, the, my dad became the minister of a local church, okay, so very traditional, very religious. Uh, I'll give you guys an example. Uh, when I was about 16, my brother came out of the closet as, as gay, uh, and my dad, he tried to pray the gay away. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, before you laugh, it, it worked. It actually, it worked. Because uh, my brother, he moved to the other side of the country, so... Uh, <laughs> my, uh, my sister growing up, my sister was like a very progressive Christian. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> I'll, I'll explain. My, would be sitting around the dinner table and, and she'd always chime in and she'd say, I think God is a woman. <laughs> very, very progressive Christian type mentality. That's something you kind of hear sometimes, right? Uh, so guys, by round of applause, who thinks God is a man? <laughs> it's fine, it's, welcome. Uh, <laughs> uh, who thinks God is a woman? <laughs> Kid at the back, uh, <laughs> wonderful. And who thinks uh, that God doesn't exist? <laughs> Slightly more popular option. I get it, I get it, okay. I, I get it, uh, being a Christian these days, not so popular. It used to be very cool. Uh, you know, like 1,500 years ago. It used to be very cool being a Christian. These days, not so, not so cool. Being a Christian these days is kind of like listening to Michael Jackson. Uh, like it used to be very cool, but then there was just one too many pedophilia accusations. <laughs> like, oh, I don't know about that anymore. Uh, I hate to break it to you guys, though. You're pretty much all wrong, except for you. Uh, you're, God is a man. Uh, God is a man. Uh, for me, look, it's, I think it's the only thing that makes sense, right? I feel like only a man could be responsible for so much pain and suffering in the world. <laughs> and still believe that he's perfect. <laughs> if, you, if you think about it, God is basically Donald Trump, right? Uh, they're both terrible fathers. They both have followers that will believe anything they say, and they both brag about this best-selling book that they didn't write. Um, uh, <laughs> Uh, what else can I tell you guys about myself? Um, oh, I am uh, uncircumcised. Uh, <laughs> as, as God intended, right? Before he changed his mind. Any other uncircumcised people in? Give me a chair. <laughs> Fantastic, amazing. Wow, I was actually kind of hoping to hear from more women. Um, but good to see some people proud of it, at least. Uh, for some reason, sometimes when I ask that question, people just shrink into their shoes. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know, there's a lot of like stigma around uncertainty. No, sorry, there's a lot of smegma. There's a lot of stigma, guys. There's a stigma 
the stigma is the smegma. Okay, people that are circumcised are always like, oh, you're uncircumcised. How do you keep it clean? Uh, and I feel like I speak for all uncircumcised people when I say soap. <laughs> I actually don't like, don't love that they call it uncircumcised. Uh, to me, it feels a little bit unfair. Uh, because technically speaking, I'm not um, anything. Right? Like, <laughs> It's actually them that are um, the, the, the tip of their penis. Uh, I kind of think we should reappropriate the language. Instead of calling us uncircumcised, I think we should call them semi-dickless. Uh, I think would be a fair way to do it. Uh, a lot of people think, because talk about my penis, uh, <laughs> that I'm a man. I actually identify as uh, whichever bathroom happens to be free. Uh, I don't know if anyone else does that. Like, so usually as a man, right? But then sometimes as a woman, very, very occasionally, very occasionally, I will identify as, as disabled. Uh, <laughs> I don't, look, I don't like acting it out, okay? <laughs> Chill, I, just disabled bathroom, a little bit nicer, right? A little bit, a little bit more spacious, a little bit cleaner. Uh, disabled bathrooms, kind of like the prefect bathrooms in, in, in Harry Potter. Uh, I don't know. Any Harry Potter fans? Yeah, great, excellent, excellent. Um, it's weird growing up religious. You know, you learn things, and you kind of as you as you develop you you reassess different things as well you know like i used to give to charity a lot um i used to give to the make a wish foundation Do people know the make a wish foundation yes. yeah. yeah okay great Most, half of the people for the people that don't know the make a wish foundation uh, it's a charitable organization that takes terminally ill children uh, gives them a dying wish right uh, there's only one rule uh, you can't wish not to be dying. Um, <laughs> I didn't make the rule, okay? So most kids, they wish to like, I don't know, meet a celebrity or go to Disneyland or something like that. Uh, and if you give to the Make-A-Wish Foundation, you get to feel really good about yourself for having made this kid's dying wish come true, right? Uh -huh. Except, well, they don't tell you. One of those, it's one of those like written in the small print type things, but they don't tell you is that at least 50% of the time that kid makes some kind of miraculous recovery <laughs> and then just goes on to live like a perfectly happy life after this. Which, oh, which is good, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what these guys are thinking. <laughs> Obviously a good thing. <laughs> Clearly a good thing. <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> this is cool. <laughs> There's like a Ford Echo <laughs> over here. <laughs> Obviously a good thing, but it's not really, it's not really what I was giving money for. <laughs> you know, like as a consumer, as, a, as, as somebody... Like it feels like false advertising, doesn't it? <laughs> like if I'm going to be giving money to the Make-A-Wish Foundation for some kid's dying wish, I just... <laughs> I just think there should be some kind of a guarantee. Uh, I, you, like, <laughs> you don't, I, rest assured, you don't have to like that joke. I 100% I, I understand if you don't like that joke. I, um, I told that joke once in front of the head of the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Uh, I didn't know that they were in the audience. Just, uh, they just happened to be in the audience. And, and, and they also didn't like that joke. <laughs> they came up to me afterwards and they were like, Hey, I, I run the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Uh, would you mind if we talk about that joke? Uh, and uh, I'll buy you a beer if you listen to me. I was like, that's fantastic, absolutely. <laughs> so we sat down, we talked about the joke, and I, I revised the joke a little bit. I used to say it was 60% of kids survived, and now I say it's 50%. <laughs> and I just want to let you guys know if there's any jokes that you don't like, uh, you're more than welcome to buy me a beer. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's very, very welcome. Uh, a lot of people wonder why I wear this hat. Uh, I'm not bald. <laughs> Not bald. I actually, I wear this hat uh, to trick vegans into sleeping with me. 
You're a vegan, are <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I am single. Are there single people in your chair? Yeah. <laughs> wow, guys, do better. You gotta be way more enthusiastic when you're single. You gotta be enthusiastic when you're single because you want everybody to think that it was your decision. Right? Got this friend that's like, oh, I'm single by choice. I'm single by choice. It's like, yeah, man, no one, no one chose you. <laughs> Actually. But I am single, recently single, and it is, it's tough, I will say, it's very, very hard being single. Uh, I went on a, a, a date with a girl recently. Uh, we went to a bar, right? Uh, we got a couple of drinks, we sat down. And then she went to the bathroom. Uh, but before going to the bathroom, she got the, uh, like, the coaster from underneath her drink, and she put it on top of her drink. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Brutal. <laughs> Brutal. Insulting to me for, for, for two reasons, right? I mean, number one, number one, it suggests that maybe, possibly, potentially, I'm the kind of person that might be tempted uh, to put something into her drink, which I'm not. I'm not. I would never share my drugs with her, okay? <laughs> and secondly, it suggests that if I was that kind of person, her fucking coaster would stop me. <laughs> like I'm some kind of gorilla that can't figure out the puzzle. Your coaster is not Thor's hammer. That's not how it works at all. It's tough, it's tough being single. I, I, I was in a, a, a shop the other day uh, buying, buying condoms. <laughs> to have uh, consensual sex with adult women, what a... <laughs> <laughs> I saw uh, one, of, one of the brands of condoms, bizarre, one of the brands of condoms was Trojan condoms. Have you guys seen these? <laughs> Trojan condoms, like the worst name for a brand of condoms ever, right? Named, named after the Trojan horse. Do you guys know about the Trojan horse? Yeah. This is like the whole city, basically... Uh, I'll sum it up. Basically what happened, that there was this, there was this, the city of Troy that was impregnable. Nobody could impregnate the city of Troy. It was impossible to impregnate the city of Troy. No one could do it at all, okay? Until, well, there's a whole bunch of men, they got off of boats, um, the seamen, they, they, they were <laughs> trapped outside the city of Troy, could not get into the city until they invented the Trojan horse which allowed all of the seamen inside of the city where they could explode everywhere and ruin everything. It's the worst name for a brand of condoms ever. They also, these days, they have um, lambskin condoms. Lambskin condoms, yeah. Lambs, they're, na they're named after, like, uh, sorry, they're made out of, uh, like, lamb intest intestines. It's for people that are, like, allergic to, to latex, I think. Which is... a bit gross. <laughs> a bit gross. If you think about it, technically speaking, it's... Uh, necrophilia, pedophilia and bestiality all rolled into one tiny little packet. <laughs> uh, which, like, even as a New Zealander, that's a bit... <laughs> It's a little bit much. A little bit much for me, for sure. It's hard being, being single. I'm, I'm doing this thing, it's kind of a New Year's resolution uh, this year. I'm trying to work on my, my self-hatred because uh, it disgusts me. Uh, so I thought maybe one way to do this is just to be completely open and honest about all of my feelings all of the time. Uh, it's kind of my goal, but it's very, very difficult because uh, I'm trying to do that at the same time as still being attractive to women. Um, very tricky to find the balance, because I see a lot of guys being very, very open about their feelings, but it doesn't work for them at all, right? Like, there's this group called Incels. Yeah, I, I know. They're very, very open about how they feel like it's unfair that no women want to sleep with them, and it doesn't work at all. In fact, if anything, it makes women want to sleep with them even less. Terrible, terrible, right? There's, 
there's uh, construction workers are sort of famous for being very open about their their sexual feelings of, of sexual attraction to women that walk past and and there's a whole social movement against it you know i saw i saw a guy on the bus the other day that was being very very expressive uh, about his feelings of sexual arousal uh and he got arrested <laughs> so what do you be open about you know i think new technique what i'm doing is is before i go and be open about any feelings i just check in with the women around me to see what the feelings are that i'm supposed to be having uh, and then i'd be open about the right feelings <laughs> that's it. you kind of have like schrodinger's feelings until you know which the correct ones are right <laughs> And there's a the thing. It's tricky, tricky being single, guys, but um, not as tricky as it is being in, in a relationship. Is um, <laughs> anyone in a relationship? Give me a chair. Excellent. Yay. Well done. How's it going for you guys? <laughs> I, had to, I had to check in with each other. I love that. <laughs> uh, how long have you been going for? Seven years? Very decent. Very decent. I just uh, broke up with a girl and it was like one and a bit years and that was enough. That was too... Uh, it was, yeah, I, I wasn't ready for it. I wasn't prepared for what it was going to be, you know. I wasn't... I wasn't... I just didn't know. I didn't know. I, like, I, I, I met her. I moved in with her. Before I moved in with her, actually, the guy you're going to see later, Matt, he was like, John, just so you know, when you move in with her, you're going to have to hide it every single time that you masturbate. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no big deal, that's fine. I pretty much always hide up when I masturbate. <laughs> All good, right? Then I moved in with her. It turns out I had to hide every single thing that I did. True story. I would wait, I would get out of bed in the morning, and then I would have to pull the sheets up, put the pillows back at the top of the bed, and leave it as if I was never there. <laughs> Isn't that bizarre? It's crazy. I would make a sandwich and then I'd have to go along with a cloth afterwards and wipe the bench like it was a crime scene. <laughs> like I'm a goddamn criminal. I would wake up in the morning and then I would want to poop because I have a bodily functions as a human, but I would have to flush the toilet as I was pooping so she wouldn't know what I was up to in there. When you're single, you get to do whatever you want, whenever you want, all of the time, which is too much responsibility. <laughs> I am not ready for that much responsibility at all, right? Because when I can do whatever I want, whenever I want, all of the time, Turns out all I want to do is eat McDonald's and masturbate, which is <laughs> not the best lifestyle, you know? Not the best lifestyle. Throughout the whole uh, breakup process, I, 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 you guys, I'm not going to believe this, but I, I realised that I have some personal problems uh, <laughs> to, to deal with. <laughs> I realised uh, that I, that I um, have some issues, uh, so I decided to, to, to go and see a, a therapist. Uh, to, to fix some of these problems, right? Um, so I've been going to see a therapist for like, for months now. Every single week I'm going to see the therapist. But she hasn't fixed any of the problems. In fact, in fact, every week I go, she just finds more problems that I didn't know that I had before. So like, in some ways it doesn't even feel like I broke up with my girlfriend. It just feels like my girlfriend now looks like my mum. Uh, <laughs> Very, very weird. <laughs> My therapist, she doesn't understand me at all. Uh, like, I, I told her that I smoke a lot of weed. Any weed smokers? Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a lot of people left you out in the cold there, man. That, that's rough. That was the sort of lackluster round of applause I was looking for, though. <laughs> In fairness. Uh, so I told her I smoke a lot of weed, right? And she was like, John, why don't you stop smoking weed and challenge yourself? Which just proves that she doesn't get it at all. <laughs> right? There is nothing more challenging than living your entire life while stoned. <laughs> 
It took me 45 minutes to order McDonald's the other day, okay? Like I'm not challenging myself. And then I'm sitting at home, waiting for the order to come, and then I see that I'd ordered it to my default address, which is where I used to live, which is my ex-girlfriend's house, and I'm like, fuck! Holy shit! That's so bad. That's so bad. So I have to like put pants on, put a shirt on, spray myself with deodorant, and then race this Uber Eats driver across town. And then like kind of lurk outside of her house, trying not to be seen at all. And then like intercept my McDonald's before she gets a buzz on her door being like, McDonald's for John. Oh my God. Smoking weed is hard. <laughs> it's a hard thing to do. If I hadn't been smoking weed, I probably could have just changed my address on Uber Eats and it would have been absolutely fine. I did uh, decide to take her advice. I decided to stop, stop smoking. I was like, she's the expert. So uh, I haven't smoked in a little while and oh my God, life's boring. <laughs> Everything is so boring. Every I used to just watch YouTube videos all day long and, and it's boring. I go to the beach and it's cold and it kind of a bit shit and the water like makes my feet feel weird. Uh, when you smoke a lot of weed and then you go to not smoking weed, it's, it's kind of like, I don't know if you guys ever saw the first Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Yeah. You know how they get like the curse of the Black Pearl on them and then they can't enjoy anything in life anymore, and like food tastes like ash in their mouth. Uh, but they have a lot of money. Yeah, I've been saving a lot of money, <laughs> basically, is what I'm saying. We got any New Year's resolutions up? up? Um, okay. uh, oh yeah, uh, I've, yeah, I did quit smoking Yeah? <laughs> nice, how's it been for you, man? Four months. Yeah, it's been four months. Guys, four months, weed free. Hell yes. Hell yes. That's excellent. I do. I stopped smoking weed and then I just started drinking a lot more. <laughs> That's my coping mechanism. I, um, I do think maybe I have a bit of an alcohol problem uh, because I can't afford any more alcohol, uh, which is a big problem. Uh, a big problem for me. I thought about, for a second, about joining Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, if you... you know. <laughs> I, I thought about it, because when you first hear about it, it sounds quite good, right? It sounds like quite a fun place to hang out with other alcoholics anonymously. Uh, turns out, it's the opposite. It's not not at all what you would expect. Okay. Alcoholics Anonymous is like the least anonymous thing in, in the world. You go, you go to your first meeting and they make you stand up in front of everybody, tell them your name, and then admit that you're an alcoholic. <laughs> wildly, wildly non-anonymous. Ah, and then they, you got this like 12 step program, right? Step two is go and find all of the people that you've ever wronged in your life, tell them who you are and admit that you're an alcoholic. <laughs> Completely not anonymous. Right, and then step three is come to believe that there's a higher power in the world, uh, God. Tell God who you are and that you're an alcoholic, which is completely not anonymous. And then step four is fucking crazy, guys. Step four is a big step up. Step four. Did you do it? No. <laughs> step four is stop drinking. Uh, that's where I hit a bit of a wall. <laughs> Huge step up. I was like, no, I'm not going to do that, right? Because I have, I have tried sobriety before. I, I spent the first 13 years of my life sober. Uh, and it wasn't good, man. It wasn't good. I was weak. I was lame. I, I, women were repulsed by me. I couldn't grow a beard. Ever since I started drinking, I really got my life together, you know? I, uh, I finished high school. Uh, I got a job. <laughs> Alcohol's really given me the confidence to chase my dreams. 
Guys, I am really trying to be positive, and I do think that uh, the universe works things out as corny and hippie and stupid as that sounds. I want to tell you a very quick story that I think proves this, okay? Uh, back in 2014, I went to the Football World Cup in Brazil. I didn't have tickets for any games, I didn't have any money, uh, and I was about to go back home to New Zealand uh, in the hostel on my last night, and someone said, hey, I've got this extra ticket for a Football World Cup game, do you want it? I was like, fuck yes, <laughs> please. I want it, it was a ticket for Russia, Belgium, right? So I went with this Belgian guy uh, that I was staying with at the hostel. I got my face painted as Belgium. I was very pro-Belgium uh, in that moment. Uh, we headed off to see this Football World Cup game. I was like so wildly excited for the game. And we go to this bar just beforehand and I'm kind of lining up at the bar to, to, to get a drink and I, I get to the top of the bar and I'm having to like dig into my pocket to get all the coins that I have left in the world out of my pocket and I'm kind of mucking around so I had to, I put the ticket in my back pocket as I was digging around for the coin and in the time that it took me to buy a beer <laughs> and reach back into my pocket to get the ticket, the ticket was gone. I was Devastated! I couldn't believe the, 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 not even luck, how much of a stupid idiot I was, right? And I was just moping around the bar, going up to, like, looking on the floor, going up to people being like, you know, have you seen my ticket? Have you, have you got another free ticket for me? <laughs> Fifteen minutes, I was walking around the bar. Finally, I decided to give up. I start walking out of the bar, and just as I'm leaving the bar, someone says, hey, is this your ticket? They're waving a ticket at me. I turn around, I go, yes, that's my ticket. That is absolutely my ticket. That has to be my ticket. Definitely, I hug the person. Uh, I say I would buy you a beer, but I don't have any money. <laughs> I take the ticket, I kiss the ticket, I walk outside to see my Belgium friend, uh, and I start looking at the ticket, and I realise that it's a completely different ticket. In fact, a much better ticket <laughs> for a much better seat in the stadium. I'm like, what are the chances that I would get my ticket stolen and then somebody else would lose their ticket <laughs> in that exact spot? Take this ticket, big stupid grin on my face. I go to the game, uh, find my seat, and I realise that my seat is in the middle of the Russian section. <laughs> right dead smack in the middle of 13 Russian guys whose friend had had their ticket stolen. <laughs> guys, I'm not sure if God's real, but if he is, he's fucking funny. <laughs>